Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Akai Fire Controller that's recently been released and I'm going to share 10 tips, tricks and hidden features to do with the device. Some of them will help your production, others customize the device a little bit, and some are the more sort of hidden features that aren't necessarily immediately apparent when using the device. So let's switch to the overhead camera and get right to it. You can change the brightness of the pads on fire by pressing Alt and rotating the volume encoder to change the pad brightness. This can really help fit it into your environment. By pressing Alt and rotating the pan encoder, you can change the saturation of the pads, which changes their intensity. You can set up fire as a visualizer. All you have to do is go to the oscilloscope in the top and left click or right click and select spectrogram. Then simply press Alt and rotate the filter encoder until spectrogram is shown and you can see the frequencies. The left represents low frequencies, the right high frequencies. There are two more visualizer modes. If you keep rotating the filter encoder, you can get peaks going from right to left, or peaks going from left to right. To return back to the main mode on fire, simply rotate the filter encoder until it says visualizer off. Fire's OLED can display a dB meter. Press Alt, rotate the resonance encoder. The screen will still give you feedback about any parameter you adjust, and to turn it off, press Alt and rotate the resonance encoder. Many people have commented that they want to be able to send channels to the mixer using fire. Well, you can. So if you select a channel, such as the kick, click in the selection encoder, you're then sending that channel to a different mixer insert. I'll demonstrate now with the kick. I'm sending it to 18, 19. This is all possible straight from fire. There's no need to touch your mouse or the computer. If you're not using the user banks, or you only want to use the user banks, but you find yourself scrolling through for ages, you can just press Alt and it will only go between your two user banks, or if you press Shift, it will only go between channel and mixer. You know by now that these banks control these four rotary encoders, and you can map these encoders to any parameter in the software, but did you know that you can map them all at the same time? Here I'm going to show you on an EQ. The first thing I do is press this button, multi-linked controller. Then I adjust the four parameters in FL Studio. These can be any parameters in third-party plugins or FL Studio stock plugins. Then I touch the four encoders and rotate them a little bit just to make sure that a connection is made. And there you go, all four parameters linked simultaneously. And these can be any parameters, they could be reverb, ADSR envelopes, anything inside your synths, delays, anything really. Now to remove any of these links, simply right click on the parameter, select link to controller from the drop down list, press reset and accept it. I'm sure you've seen that using the channel bank here you can control the volume, pan, filter and resonance of an individual channel, but you can actually hold down a step and control its own unique property. But you can also hold down as many steps as you can and adjust them all together. And then releasing them one at a time, you can make adjustments like this. This feature is especially useful for repitching hi-hats, where you can hold them all together, rotate the selection encoder, and then just release them one at a time when they're at their desired pitch. Currently, every step you press in will have the same velocity. If you press Shift and then the Step button to go into Accent Mode, you can select a different default velocity, and then every step you put in will have that lower default velocity. To exit Accent Mode, simply press Shift and press the Step button again. By now I think everyone knows the rotary encoders are great for controlling channel and step properties, but you can also use the grid button. So if you hold down a step, pressing the grid button will alter its shift, which puts it slightly out of time from the grid, which can be really useful for making drum patterns a lot more realistic. And the great thing about this is you don't even have a, to have a channel selected to adjust its property. Whereas using the channel rack, you would have to select that specific channel. You'd have to navigate to the graph editor, open it up, paint in your velocities by drawing or clicking, then navigate to the next parameter you want to adjust, such as pitch, and then manually input the steps. And then of course you would have to close the graph editor when you're done. So sometimes when I'm explaining these controls in a tutorial, they look a little bit slow, but when you're actually hands-on using it, it's pretty quick. Each mode usually has a few sub-modes underneath it. For instance, in drum mode, the FPC is here, but if you click the selection encoder and rotate, it's centered, and then if you rotate it again, you can get to slice X mode. So if you have a slice X loaded in the channel rack, in this case I do, and I'm just going to drag and drop a melodic sample onto it, it's been automatically sliced, and now I can play these slices. And 
And remember, this was all done automatically. And as well as Slice X, if you click in again and rotate, you can enter the omni-channel mode. This shows all the channels and sounds in your project. So I've got my drums, then I have a few melodics down here. And finally, if your computer is sleeping or it's turned off, but fire is still drawing power, it goes into this sort of interesting light show. So that's all 10 for this video, plus an extra little one at the end there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did find it helpful. I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.